Okay, uh, so thank you very much for having me. I'm Nick Barsat. I work for Red Hat in the CTO organization. And for the past four years, I've been working on Edge. And I also happen to have been working in open source for the, the past 20 years, I think, something like that. One thing I've seen is that we, as a community, have the power to transform industries. Uh, a good example is what happened when we worked on containerization and virtualization uh, to the telco industry. In the past five years, there is not one telco that hasn't been impacted by the transformation to VNF and now CNF. Most of the 5G deployments that you see today are running on containers. And this is something that we keep on doing. Take a look at what we are doing with multi-tenancy, with data science, with small form factor Kubernetes. Uh, all this is directly having an impact on all the other industries that we haven't directly touched. And Edge is really a part of it. But one thing I've observed is that it always happen the same way. We first identify a few users that have a real problem to solve. People that want to go onto the market with something. And here I'm taking the example of two customers I've been working with, Lockheed Martin and the ABB, these two large companies where the people that made us decide that we should be working on a small form factor Kubernetes. One of them is doing data science, the other one is doing data collection, but they are pretty good example of what uh, the deployment of Kubernetes at the edge would be. And what we did was engage them on working with us on a community project called MicroShift. MicroShift is a small form factor Kubernetes doing, taking the vanilla upstream code, compiling it into a single binary, adding, uh, adding a few things here and there. But one of the things we realized when we started working with them is that Kubernetes was not everything that these customers wanted. And really what was needed was an ability for those devices that we were going to uh, be deploying to behave the same way as the onboard computers or as the uh, industrial computers that these guys were already deploying. It's a behavior of a device, not the behavior of a server. So we decided that we needed to add functionality into the OS as well. And once we validated that what we'd done together worked, or flies in this example, well, that's when we knew that it was time to go and build a product out of it. In this example right here, Lockheed Martin is using a, a drone to survey vast area. So basically, you can imagine a drone taking off for a, a, a multiple hour mission and go and survey California, for example, to look out for a fire starting. But what happens when this drone is flying is that they need to do the detection in real time. So they can't allow uh, two 4K cameras to be sending their feedback to uh, a station in real time. So they need to have handling of the process on the drone in real time. But the thing is, since the drone is flying for a long time, condition can change while the drone is flying. And this use case where you need to switch the workloads, basically the AI model that you're using while the drone is in flight, is what justified for us the need to use Kubernetes on this drone. Because you can run containers in multiple ways, but Kubernetes is good at orchestrating. So when you need to be orchestrating, that's when you need Kubernetes. And in this case, this drone is capable of switching its mission. Imagine that a boat would sink off the coast of California while the drone is flying, you can remotely send an order to the drone 
to switch to, oh, let's look out for people that are droning at sea so that we can send rescue for them. And now that this drone has flown for the first time last week, it's time for a company such as Red Hat to launch a product like the one we are announcing this morning, Red Hat Ed, uh, Device Edge. And what we're doing with uh, Red Device Edge is taking upstream Kubernetes, combine it with Linux, an immutable Linux, and delivering something that can run in minimal configurations on ARM and x86 without any issues. And this allows us to complete the wide panel of topologies that we were able uh, to meet. So from the smallest to the largest environment at the edge, you can have your containers everywhere you want them. So if you want to know more about uh, MicroShift and this project, there are a couple sessions uh, this afternoon at uh, OpenShift Commons. One is a demonstration by Lockheed Martin of the AI they're running uh, on a very small device. And another one is a presentation by two of the engineers that have been working on uh, MicroShift um, that is happening. Uh, Frank Zdarsky and John Cope are two of the main contributors to this project. Thank you very much. And if you want to come and contribute with us, here is where you can do that. Okay.